morning folks you're joining me on day four of a rewire it is a six bed two reception room three story victorian townhouse and so <laughs> really high ceilings three and a half meter ceilings long chases lots of steps <laughs> day one i got it completely wired and we've got dedicated radials power radials for per floor so dedicated sockets and lighting for the top floor dedicated socket and lighting circuits for this first floor dedicated socket and lighting circuits for the ground floor a smoke detector circuit i've got cat sixes going in everywhere uh, a couple on the top floor a couple on the first floor three or four on the ground floor for various things like access points and cctv they've all been wired in on day one three sparks on day one three sparks on day two we've got everything chased on day two day three so yesterday wednesday everything was boxed and capped and i even bonded a lot of the chases i bonded all that i could do on the second and first floor and on the ground floor as i was running low i just did round the switches and sockets so that we can have when we come to second fix we can have a nice snug finish back against the wall now i'm doing the board today and the second fixing today so hopefully it'll be all done today that's four days and I've also put in two 75mm double line ducts from the board and from the where the all the data or where the data cabinet will be under the floor and into the back of the house near the kitchen ready for when they do that future extension we've got cable routes from the back of the house to the front of the house because the client wants to finish the ground floor the front half of it on rewires I go hard and fast for the first few days so I can ease off and roll into the weekend and have an easy ride I don't know what you folks are like technically 9, 10, 11, 10, that's 12 man days to do to do this rewire you might think that's really slow you might think that's really fast I'm actually starting to enjoy them <laughs> rewires are actually growing on me <laughs> it does really help I, I feel like I feel like I'm a good judge of character especially when it comes to my clients it does really help when you've got really nice, really pragmatic, really helpful and logical clients who understand the process and what's involved. That really helps. Right, this is the setup. So I've just isolated this first and second floor flat supply and this, and it is right. So the first and second floor is completely dead on all the floors. And I'm left with this, which someone had done something recently, but it covers all the ground floor stuff I want to keep. So I might have to wave a box through some of the existing sockets, but Hopefully, it'll be relatively straightforward. Right, so the DNO have been in and relocated the meters, as you can tell. So there's one of the meters, and there's the there's the um, client's new meter. So yeah, they got one supply, PME, and at some point in in time they dog leg off of it to, to feed a second spy in this property because they split it into second and first flat and a ground floor flat. I've identified the old cabling. So we've got the old kitchen cooker. We've got the ground floor ring and we've got the lighting for the ground floor, which feeds the back side of the house. Luckily, the way it's wired and because I locked the floors up, which the, the client, the client has got loads of flooring because they're actually replacing the, it's all a bit wobbly. I've just got to do a Wager box, which has been done behind me under the floor. And then there's a Wager box in that room next to me. And we've managed to keep the ring intact. However, I'm going to drop it to a 20 anyway. So I've still got to inspect and test those circuits, but they're, they're the only three circuits that I've got to keep going. These are all my new circuits. I think I've got seven or eight supplies I think going in. I've also got a doorbell transformer cable, just in case of a cat six, just in case they have a, a ring doorbell in the future. There is my 75 mil duct, which runs from here, and it goes through the house, along with the Cat6. There's loads of uh, Cat6 cabling. As you can see, I'll terminate all that tomorrow, probably. But two 75 mil ducts go through the floor here, over there. And then they come out just under the floor, just there, ready to do this whole back side of the house extension at some point. <clears throat> So my plan is, it's just, I think it's just 10 o'clock. So I spent the first, first hour, I had a cup of tea, figured out what was what, disconnected all the old stuff, 
figured out the, the stuff I've got to keep. I'm going to put in, I've also got my uh, power bank adapter. So the clients are actually living here. The, the house is um, big enough and there's ample room for us to, for them to live here whilst we do the rewire. Plus they're doing some serious amount of work themselves. So they work from home. So I've got a power bank adapter, so they're plugging in there. So the Wi-Fi is still going. So I've got, as long as that doesn't drop out and run out, they've got the Wi-Fi so they can work from home. They've got the laptops fully charged. Uh, I'm planning on fitting a double stacked fuse box board. And because I've got seven or eight circuits now, plus three existing. And then when we do the rear extension, there's going to be another seven or eight circuits, underfloor heating, oven, hob, sockets, outdoor supply, outdoor lighting, outdoor uh, sockets. Um, so there's another seven or eight. So that's why I'm going for double stacker. Plus there isn't much room and they want to finish this floor in, which is why I put the duct in. And so I'm going to stick it in just about there. I reckon. So, I've been about an hour since I last saw you, just, you probably just saw the time lapse. I've got the board in. I've used the fuse box membrane grommets, which really good, to be fair. I used to use, or I have been using whisker membrane grommets, but these fuse box ones are really nice. So, fuse, so I've got all the uh, new circuits in the bottom, and I've got the existing house circuits in the bottom. Right? There's one lighting circuit, which I which comes from over here and then goes up. So kept that in, it's gone in the top. I've done all the knockouts on the top there. So for all the future circuits and the knockouts at the bottom to do the um, future extension. Just got the main tails. I've got an isolator to go in there, a Wilex isolator to pop in there. And so all the new cables can come out of that duct, go along under the bottom into one of those knockouts or in the top. Now I'll just start loading up the RCBOs and then start terminating up. Right, <sighs> classic <laughs> consumer unit mess around me, surrounded. <laughs> Look at that, <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> but that's the board fitted. I fitted nice later, the Dino came out and then connected up to meet me, which is fantastic. <laughs> I put um, blanks in, modular blanks in for thermal deregulating, especially on high rated circuits. I've got the Aco, that's the Aco fire alarm remote switch. I like to fit them, especially in these buildings where the ceilings are really high. So if they ever get triggered, it's going to be a pain for them to try and silence them so they can do it all here. Right, completely finished the board. I'm just going through my last few tests. I'm using the Chauvin our new um, installation tester, which is a very nice bit of kit. Very, very clever stuff. <clears throat> just running through doing all my RCD testing. See, I've uh, put some heat shrink on the main earthing conductor and the gas protective bond. There is the water is plastic. It's an insulated pipe coming in, so that's not required to be bonded. And what I've done with the um, data stuff, so the Cat Six, that is uh, that may be a doorbell in the future. 
so I've wired a Cat6 to the front door. However, if they want to change it to a CCTV or something like that, I've done a link between this cabinet, because this flooring is going to be completely finished, over to here, which is going to be all the, uh, the data cabinet. So what I've done for the data cabinet part of the uh, of the install, I've wired Cat6 throughout the, throughout the house. They've all been labelled up and I've also colour coded them on purpose. So all the yellow plugs, so when the client decides to get a, a switch or something to go in this room on the desk, all the yellow plugs are all uh, RJ45 sockets around on the ground floor. The red ones are all access points. So there's three access points in this property. Uh, second, first and ground. They're all with red plugs on the end. I've then got that link to that cupboard, which you just saw. So that doorbell may, may turn into a camera in the future. So I put it as a, a black. And then there's definitely a CCTV on the first floor, which I've done as with a blue connector. It's little things that I do. I don't know if you do them. Let me know in the comments below if you do that. But um, I, I worked for a very large um, broadcasting company. I was charged with installing and running and terminating all the data cabling. That's what I've done. And that's in a duct there, just above the floor. See, And that duct runs to the back of the house because there's going to be future installation of three or four more access points and data points in the rear extension of the house. What I use to do all my terminations for Cat6, Cat5, etc, etc. I've got a bag of pass-through crimps and plugs. I use the Klein pass-through crimper. Some people love it, some people hate it. Fine tools tester, along with the one that the, these things which you can plug into the sockets and test so you know you've got the right one. So I use that. A Klein punch down tool as well. <laughs> Looks like I'm sponsored by Klein, but I'm not. Uh, Klein USB tester. <laughs> Nipex flush cutters and a little, doesn't need to be insulated when you're doing data. I've got a little Klein screwdriver, which has got a little Phillips in it and a terminal on the end. Done. Up here under the floor here we've got a cat six for a future access point up here. There's a cat six in that bedroom down there. And uh that's it for the top floor. This is gonna be a, an extension, so we haven't done much. We've just got the supplies up here, terminated them safely, tested, because there'll be some time in the future. Now if we go to the first floor, you can see we've got Cat6 access point, again with a red boot on, light and a smoke. Well, in fact, that's a multi-sensor, multi-sensor there. All these rooms have now been completely re rewired on the first floor, all on the new system. Future fan supply. And then if you go down to the ground floor, oh, we've got, we have got a wall light just here as well. All our chasers are in 150 zones, for the hallway on the first floor and the ground floor. And then, here we've got smoke, again, Cat6 for access point with a red boot, pendant, and then another pendant in the porch with a light switch. Down here. Just as that one. As you can see as well, up on the ceiling there, there are some Wager boxes. So that's the old uh, lighting circuit, which we had to keep going um, so that they could power up the rest of the back half of the house. Uh, there's another light switch there, which does a light there, on the corner there. Yeah, on the ground floor, I think there's one, two, three, four. Same up there on the ceiling there. So there's four pendants, which we have to loop through because it comes from this, this position, goes up around the ground floor and ends up at the back of the house. So we had to loop them through because we're not wiring that part of the house just yet. So to keep those lights going, same with the uh, sockets. There's one Wago box just there. There was only two sockets we had to Wago box through to keep the back half of the sockets. There's only a bedroom and a kitchen and a little like downstairs loo that we have to keep powered. So they've been inspected and tested and we had to link through it some of the positions. So when the time comes, when we wire the back of the house, when they do the extension, we'll just be able to chop those off and take away the Wagos and the Wago boxes and they'll be able to poke the cables back up and fill the holes because they'll be all dead. But for now, they're gonna stay. Um, 
And then there's, you see there's some classics. RJ45 modules here, buckets going in. This is uh, gonna be the office. They've all been tested. Same over here, all capped and whatnot. There's our ducting. Yeah, all done and dusted on to the next one.